Hello there lovely people! You know, now that I'm saying this, it never really occurred to me to check whether people on the internet are actually lovely. And without confirming this fact, well, this sounds like an empty platitude now, doesn't it? This is going to take, well, just a minute. Alright, here I am, let's investigate lovely people on the internet. Enter. Oh. Now that is something I won't be able to unsee. Well, I guess I need to make the best of the situation, so subscribe to the channel for the latest degeneracy in cycling. And speaking of unspeakable horrors, let me show you what I've done to my Kona. A short cage radio. An outdated old-fashioned dual ring setup with a true elliptical inner ring. A cockpit comprising of Chinese grip, Shimano shifter, Hope brake lever, Hope brake lever, Brand X dropper lever, a grip shift from SRAM and a Chinese grip. A Hope Mono 6 front brake which is clinging to a 226mm front rotor which is custom made, which is still on a 26 inch wheel and all of that is on that old broken down and revived several times yellow Duralux fork which just doesn't want to die. And last but not least, 8 inches of rotor from China which has been clinked on by Formula RX1 caliper. And the question for today is how does this work with a hope lever which is at the front? So what I've indulged over there is something we would call mix and matching brake pads. And in strictest of terms it means that I'm using a caliper and a lever that weren't really boxed in and mated by a manufacturer. However, as you can see, I went a step further and I have matched uh, brake pads from two different manufacturers. So they've got a Hope lever and a Formula caliper. And of course you might want to ask the question, why would anyone want to do something like that? And the reason is because I could. But the more specific reason is that I am using pretty ancient uh, Hope Mono 6 brakes on this bike and I like them very much and they match uh, the yellow cockpit so I wasn't really keen on getting rid of them. However, one of the calipers, the rear one, well, has gone with the wind and my really uh, skilled attempts at repairing it, you don't want to see the corpse, my really uh, skilled attempts at repairing it failed and unfortunately I was left with this dangling hose with nothing to attach. So, I have tried to find a replacement caliper from Hope, but for some reason calipers for that particular manufacturer aren't popping up on local markets, which just speaks volumes about the quality of their levers. However, what does happen is that calipers from Formula are popping up all over the place, well, locally, which means that the uh, Formula levers must be pretty shoddy, because people break them and they are left with calipers which they then sell, you get the drift. Anyhow, I have sourced a caliper and I have attached it to the hose from the Hope and it actually works. And of course that's my reason, why would I want to do something like that? Your reason might be completely different, for example the very popular Shigura attachment, uh, arrangement, which is using uh, Shimano levers with servo wave mechanism on Magura calipers, apparently produces very, uh, very predictable, very strong and very grabby brakes and some people like them. And of course there's also a case of, for example, looks, you might want to, you might want to use a, I don't know, particular lever on your uh, on your bars because it's pretty and a particular caliper because it matches your fork or what have you. Point being, I'm not going to make a definitive statement here, but there might be reasons why you want to do something like that. Alright, with that scholastic out of the way, let us discuss the meat of the matter, which is what sort of problems you might encounter when trying to do something like this. Problem number one, fluid kind. Obviously, since those brakes are hydraulic, there's something hydraulic inside. Essentially, it means that there's a fluid inside. And in case of bicycle brakes, this fluid comes in two varieties. Variety number one, which is a DOT brake fluid, which is uh, used, for example, in cars and usually accompanied with a number behind it, either DOT4, in case of bicycles at least. DOT4 or DOT5.1. Those are, I think, based on glycolic alcohol. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just saying something from the top of my head. However, they are cross-compatible in a system that is designed for DOT4. You can use DOT5.1. If there's a system designed for DOT5.1, you can use DOT4. 
For example, the formula over here is DOT4, HOPE is DOT5.1 and it works perfectly because obviously it's compatible. The main difference between those two brake fluids is that one is, I think, is more resistant to temperature than the other. Doesn't really matter for bicycles. The other fluid kind is obviously the mineral oil, usually found in Shimano brakes, Magura brakes and in brakes from the Far Eastern manufacturers such as Tektro or TRP, Zoom and what have you. Obviously I'm not going to bet my life on it, but that's usually the place where you can find it considering that Far Eastern uh, manufacturers, the Chinese, are usually copying Shimano. Anyhow, the point with uh, mineral oil is that it is essentially Vaseline but in liquid form. So as such you can usually find it in baby oil and in bicycle brakes because when it comes to actual engineering it is only used, I think, in hydraulic systems such as the, I don't know, excavators and what have you. Uh, point being that for brakes it is only used on bicycles at least to my knowledge. The overarching point about all of this talk about fluid is that you cannot use a one fluid in a system designed for the other. For example, if you're going to fill a Shimano brake with a DOT fluid, you're going to swell all of, the, all of the seals inside and your brake is going to be destroyed because Shimano isn't selling rebuilt kits. On the other hand, if you're going to fill a SRAM brake, which is designed for DOT with mineral oil, you're going to swell all the seals and your brake is going to require a rebuild and the rebuild kits are kind of expensive. So, don't mix obviously parts from the other one type of fluid with the parts of the other types of fluid. You can only mix within uh, the systems that are designed for one particular fluid type. Problem number two which you need to solve is that fittings are obviously different between different manufacturers or even sometimes within a family of brakes from a single manufacturer. Uh, this usually isn't a problem because aftermarket uh, fittings are available for just about any hose out there and you can always cut it a little shorter and add another fitting. However, there are two major sizes of hoses and it's kind of an issue sometimes. It's usually solvable, I haven't really found a situation that I couldn't solve it. However, theoretically you can find yourself in a situation where you wouldn't be able to find a fitting that fits both ends of your system because one is requires for example 5 mm hose, the other one requires 5.4 mm hose or something like that. However, take that into account that you will most likely need two different types of fittings, especially if you're going to cross uh, different manufacturers of brakes. For example, in order to use my hope lever on the formula brake, I had to make an adapter which allowed me to screw the uh, M6 uh, fitting from Hope, which is the banjo type, into the M8 uh, fitting on the, uh, on the formula caliper. It's a kind of a bodgy thing, but it, but it works, so I'm not bothered. The third problem you'll need to solve is hydraulic compatibility between different systems, and essentially why you won't be really worrying about this, or at least disclaimer, I don't think you should because I'm going to explain in a minute, however, I haven't, well, played with all the brakes out there, so I might be wrong. Anyhow, let us pretend this is a hydraulic brake. This is the lever, this is the caliper. Note that as I'm pressing the lever, the oil is flowing to the other side of the system, to the caliper, and once the lever is fully pressed, all the oil is in the caliper, because essentially the amount of oil in the hose is constant. And, as you can see, I haven't bled this, but you can note that the, uh, the piston in the syringe has moved outside in the caliper to the amount uh, it has moved in the, in the lever. And on bicycle brakes, in the lever, there is a spring that once you stop pressing it, it will move uh, the lever back to its initial position, and that's going to retract the caliper, essentially. However, you can see that the amount of piston uh, moving here and here is the same considering the amount of oil is flowing here. What we're saying is that the mechanical advantage of this entire system is one. And what is even more interesting is that the hydraulic advantage, which is the amount of movement the pistons make inside, is also one. This is not true for hydraulic brakes, but I'm going to do, uh, explain that in a minute. Interesting part. What happens if we are going to use 
a different syringe. And this is the second brake system, which is going to show us the principle of mechanical advantage. As you can see, I replaced the smaller syringe with the bigger one. And for comparison, this is the size. And let us start with starting to pressing the lever. This is the caliper. Obviously, note that there's uh, this length of the piston travel on the lever. I am pushing it. The, f the oil is flowing to the caliper. And as the lever moved to the end of its uh, ending position, the caliper has moved approximately half of what it moved in the previous experiment, as you can see. And the important part about all of this is that uh, the amount of oil is the same, and since uh, this has a different mechanical advantage, in this particular case it's approximately two, the force which I am pushing the lever is doubled on the caliper, and the stroke of the lever is twice the stroke of the caliper. Now, how does this pertain to bicycle brakes? And it pertains like this. This is a lever, obviously, and I am pulling on it. As you can see, the tip of the lever before the brake engages moves by quite significant amount of, well, distance, about 20, 25, 30 millimeters. However, if you are going to take caliper, both halves, those pistons here are going to move out by approximately, I don't know, half a millimeter maybe. So, the mechanical advantage of the entire system is what? 40? 50? Quite significant, that's the point. The importance of mechanical advantage when it comes to a brake system is that it acts as a multiplier of the force which you are applying to the lever. So if you're pulling here at 100 newtons and the mechanical advantage of the brake is approximately I know, 40, then the brake is going to clasp the rotor with a force of 4000 newtons. That's pretty significant. And uh, part, of this, uh, part of this equation is the geometry of a lever, which is a fascinating topic on its own. However, the other part is the uh, hydraulic advantage of the hydraulic part of, uh, of the system. And it is defined as a total surface area of uh, the pistons in the caliper. For example, this uh, Hayes dyno has two. To the total surface area of a piston in the lever, which I don't know how what is the value in that particular uh, haze break. In case of our syringes, this ratio is approximately 2 to 1, so uh, each 1 newton of force I am applying to the lever here, or then this particular syringe, acts as 2 newtons on this particular part. And how does all of that pertain to bicycle brakes? You see, the problem that's theoretical is that uh, a mechanical advantage or the hydraulic advantage of the system is the ratio between one and the other. And you can get at the same ratio using differently sized parts. And if you're going to mix and match them, you're going to get unexpected results, which might be desired or not. However, bicycle brake manufacturers are facing another problem, which is, well, we don't want our stuff to be heavy and bulky. So, most brakes are more or less of the same size, which means that most of their parts are also about the same size, which means that you can safely mix and match them, provided you're going to solve the issue of both uh, uh, the fittings and the fluid. Well, you can mix and match them at your heart's content. And some manufacturers of brakes are actually exploiting this fact, because, for example, Shimano is making like five or six calipers five levers or four levers and then mix and matching them into a different SKUs and likewise Magura is doing the same. So it's not as much of an issue. However, theoretically you can find a combination of a lever and a caliper which is a, works at a, such a high mechanical advantage that the lever throw is going to be very long and there's not, there's not going to be anything you can do about it. And the other way around you can find a combination of a lever and a caliper where the mechanical advantage is going to be very very small and you're going to have very short and very uh, very short lever throw and very weak break. Anyhow in the end in my opinion this is not something you should be worried about. And once you have solved all those problems you can mix and match all the brake parts you wish because you have solved all of those problems. And I am perfectly aware that what I just said is redundant but it has been done and I said it and obviously since I am doing this from the top of my dome even though the microphone is quite stationary I'm going to continue. Well, currently I am using a hope lever and a formula brake or formula caliper and works brilliantly. I'm going to test it for the next few weeks or months 
for essentially as long as I don't fancy to reconfigure my Kona once again. And then I think in the next week or so I'm going to try to match a Hope Lever and a Haze Caliper because I have the parts. And since I have the parts as well for the other combination, I'm going to try to mix a Haze, uh, haze Lever and a Hope Caliper. And obviously we all know that Shigura is a thing. Now at this point I am out of words. However, now that I remember this, there is a way, and I'm going to test your attention span. <laughs> I'm so clever. Anyhow, there is a way to mix and match uh, brake parts from systems which are supposed to operate on different fluid type. For example, you can uh, mix or you can match to each other a Shimano lever and a Hope caliper, even though Shimano lever is uh, obviously a mineral oil and Hope is a DOT. The trick is that you can't do this uh, natively using parts from the manufacturer. However, it is possible to purchase or order custom-made seals for the caliper which are going to uh, well fit the fluid type of your lever. So for example, if you're going to be using a Shimano lever, you might want to source, and obviously the Hope caliper I have previously said, you can source uh, the seals for the caliper that are compatible with mineral oil. And at that, from that point, it's going to work brilliantly. Theoretically, you can also get seals for the other fluid type for the levers. However, those seals in calipers are pretty generic. They just have a different size, so they are easy to manufacture. However, seals in levers usually are weird, scoopy thing, so it's not easy to make them. And this is the point where after zooming around the workshop trying to find something relevant or at least entertaining to say, I've got nothing. So it's time to say goodbye. Lastly, if you found this video entertaining and worthy of your appraisal, share it around and like it if you haven't already. If you think this subscription is worthy of your attention, subscribe to the channel and, well, obviously I hope to see you on the next video.